Uh, we also want to just let you know that one of the cameras uh, on this episode was a touch out of focus. So we just want to let you know that. Um, don't think there's something wrong with your optics. Uh, fortunately, it was the camera on me, and uh, you still get to see Shane Gillis crystal clear. Enjoy the show. We can do it. You can do it. And we can do it together if we want. Um, I'm doing some shows, and that is uh, May 7th. I will be in Los Angeles. We added a show uh, right in Los Angeles here for the um, Netflix is a Joke Festival. That's at the Wiltern, Albuquerque, May 18th, Midland, May 19th in Texas, Lubbock, Texas, May 20th. Dallas, Texas, May 21, and a show has been added there and selling well, almost sold out. Thank you guys so much for that support. Savannah, Georgia, June 2nd, Augusta, Georgia, June 3rd, Montgomery, Alabama, June 4th, Columbus, Georgia, June 5th. If you have friends over there in Georgia, or, you know, people that, have, that love Georgia, you tell them about it. Uh, Hollywood, Florida, June 23rd, Fort Myers, Florida, June 24th, Daytona Beach, and Lakeland, June 25th and 26th. Um, grab your tickets at theovon.com slash T-O-U-R. That is the safest and best place to get them. Thank you guys so much in advance uh, for your support, and I look forward to seeing you on the Return of the Rat Tour. Today's guest is a very talented young man, and he's a, a great... Um, comedy man and he uh so happy he's here today and uh he has his own podcast called matt and shane's secret podcast he has his special live in austin uh which has over four million views on youtube uh happy to have him return uh to this past weekend uh my friend mr shane gillis and let myself all my Shane Gillis, man, your life, you're you're getting busy, man. I am busy. Yeah. I mean, you're getting busy, man. Do you do <laughs> do do things start feeling a little bit different? Cause I feel like you you're kind of becoming like the guy, you oh, know. Thanks, man. Like the handsome Tim Dillon. I am <laughs> I was gonna say, yeah. The second part had to be because <laughs> of the handsome. I was like, wait, what? <laughs> uh like a Tom Selleck meets Tim, like yeah. a Yeah. Yeah, a little more. Yeah, uh, I don't know. I don't. How did you feel when it happened for you? When it was when the the come up because it makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, that's an interesting question, man. I um, I don't think you know that it's really happening to like it's happening, but it's. I think the funny thing is more of it's happening for other people in some ways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they're all watching it. Yes. But um, the way you the way that I noticed it started to seem for me was like people would kind of stop me and i was like oh this is interesting like, yeah i don't know if i'm gonna be able to not be seen in some types of sometimes now sure. like in some ways maybe yeah, yeah yeah and then and then people started coming to the shows and that was that's the it. part that's it yeah yeah like uh occasionally like occasionally i'll get a pop on an intro and i'll be like oh shit like this is new this yeah. is crazy that yeah oh good. yes oh yeah, that yeah, is, yeah. you know what that's actually exactly first that. time. Yeah, first time I got one, I did a guest spot. It was right after I did Rogan the first time. I did a guest spot on Tim Dillon's show. Yeah, and I, it was like a surprise guest, and I got a pop, and I was like, oh, "What the fuck?" If people are this excited, is crazy. yes, oh, no, no, this is good because the next night I went, I went back to Philly, and I was I did a spot on DeStefano's show in Philly, which is where I'm from, and I was like, "I'm gonna get another pop." Yeah, this would be <laughs> great, dude. Like, we got a guest spot, guest spot for you, uh, Shane Gillis. <laughs> I walked out, and it was like. Oh, <laughs> I was like, damn, I thought I had something going. And it was just you clapping behind your yeah, back. Yeah, I was just like, yeah. Woo, this guy's great. Yeah, dude, that's when it is. I think that's when it is. You know what? That's really the perfect thing. It's like, yeah, it's like when you're going on stage and you're like, oh my gosh, there's people. Yeah. Like they'll say something you've said before. Yeah. They'll yell out a term. Um, dude, we were doing a storytelling show last night and, well, two weeks ago. And okay. I- uh, <laughs> Oh, because uh, you were doing- Last that, night. It was that last was night. 
That was um, at, the, at the Nashville Comedy Festival. At yes. the Wild, what is it? Wild the, West Comedy Festival? No, I think it's just Nashville Comedy Festival. At Nashville, yeah, yeah. at Nashville Comedy Festival. It was at the Ryman, and it was a storytelling show. It was Ari's show. And like two seconds into my set, because I was like opening with some material, I said two words. I was like, I like history. And this guy was like, do a story. <laughs> I was like, dude, you knew two words <laughs> of my material? That's new? <laughs> you psycho? <laughs> then he came up after he looked like hell. He was like, that was me that yelled that. I was like, you ruined it. Yeah. Don't give me a high five. Yeah, why do these people, all, there's always that guy's like, hey, I was the guy that ruined I was the one it. who fucking yelled and yeah. ruined your shit. Remember me? There's that always that urchin. Yeah, he's dude. like, hey, he like slides up. It's it's almost like this, it's like, uh, it's always some real. I wish you could see this, dude. Was he, he, looked like, he looked like a, like a miner. He looked like a 49er. Oh, yeah. Like beard. Like, hey, I came Him up to. Him and his to... bro were fully decked out in Titans gear, everything Titans. <laughs> yeah, Titans <laughs> crazy, socks dude. even. It was crazy. Yeah, Titans con. Good Good bros, on. though. For real good bros. Definitely a Titans Oh, condom. I bet he had a Tanny Hill condom on. Mm. Dude, I bet. Um, I bet. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you know, Rob Baronis hit a tree not far from here. He used to be a field goal kicker. Yeah. And he hit the upright. Rob, my Baronis. Yeah. And he hit a tree? Did he? How's he doing? He tri- it, he's, he's gone. He's in heaven. He died from a, hitting a tree? He got heavened out. Yeah. That'll do it. <laughs> he hit that. <laughs> Wide right, bro. <laughs> he hit the off right. Damn, it's hard. yeah, it's it's kind of That's a terrible. It's like a lore around the national area. It's lore. It's where Rob Baronis hit a tree. Yeah, and they even have his initials on the tree too. Really? Still. Um <laughs> what was I gonna say? Oh yeah, dude. So it's yeah, you're 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 just this is kind of it. You know, where you get busy and then you can sell tickets. And I think that's the yeah. amazing thing is that people want to come see you. It's like cause you it's almost weird with comedy. You get going in it and you're just doing it and it becomes yeah. just about the comedy. And then you realize, wow, people want to come see me. Yeah. Like there's something about me that they, sometimes it's not the comedy, I think, especially with podcasters and, um, and especially with your story, kind of like being the like, uh, you know, there's a whole fuck SNL type of energy yeah, out yeah, there yeah. in the world anyway. Yeah. And I think that you add that with your, your, you know, just being insanely funny. And then it's like, oh, I want to go see this guy. And then people with podcasts, they like the person. They want to see the person. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, it's crazy. Yeah. It happened pretty quick. Yeah. So, like, cause it's no tickets forever. Yeah. And then all of a sudden people want to show up and like, ah, yeah. Like they yell your dad's name out. You're like, all right, take it easy. Ronnie's son. Chill, chill, chill. Please. That is Ronnie's son. Yeah, I'm trying to do stand up. Yeah. This isn't the podcast. Yeah. yeah. It's fun though. Do you think sometimes people don't know when they come if it's going to be like the podcast or if it's different? I, I, I find that sometimes I find that some people are like, oh, I thought th- there's sometimes after the show that somebody's like, man, I thought it was going to be like the podcast, you know, and yeah. I almost feel bad. I'm like, dang, you know, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I wish I could make it. It's not it. as good. Yeah. It's stand-up. <laughs> Podcasts are funny. <laughs> stand-up is me doing something. Yeah. Like doing my little art. Yeah. But man, yeah, congrats on everything, dude. Thank you. It's Thank awesome. You. It's Thank funny because I even look at you and I even get like just jealous. I'm like, oh, the because the funnest thing is when you when people are getting to like getting to know you, you know? And, yeah. And I, I mean, obviously, I still have a ton of people getting to know me. I'm not saying like I've made it or nothing, but I, you could you could say that, yeah. Like you stay busy enough, you know. But the funnest part is, yeah, when people are like, oh, Shane Gillis, you're the Shane Gillis. I wonder if that's. Cause that's how I feel about like my buddy. Some of my friends are still doing like open mics and hanging out in Philly, and I'm like, damn, that was the best. Oh yeah. And like now, I wonder if you're just having the same thing where you're like, no, the best was when it started. Yeah. Oh yeah. If this is the best, I'm gonna be sad. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah, <this laughs> if this only gets worse from here, I'm I'm already pretty bummed out. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> like, that, I'm not doing great. <laughs> that that's true. It didn't, that could be something. <laughs> that could be something. So, dude, so because you grew up in the uh, in Pennsylvania, man, you grew up out, and were you like an Amish country? Did you ever have was, any interaction with the Amish? Yeah, there's a lot of Amish around. Wow, dude. yeah, Lancaster. That's I, I was like 30, 40 minutes west of Amish country, but and they're did, around, dude. Did you ever get approached by them? Because I could see you being like, I definitely, if I'm <laughs> Amish and I'm a, you know, I don't want to say a milk drinker, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but if they I'm knew. somebody that's close to that udder, they knew you I know? was getting milk. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They saw me. <laughs> yeah, that guy's chugging milk, obviously. <laughs> like uh, that guy's eight percent right there. Yeah, they uh, no, but you'll see him. We used to yell at him when we were kids. What would y'all say? Fun. Like, a... be like nice fucking horse, dumbass. Oh, oh, <laughs> <laughs> Get a car, you fucking idiot! No, <laughs> you drive past them. It was fun. Now I look back on it I'm like that's very inappropriate. The crazy part is people that yell out like queer. 
years and yeah. you're like, they're not gay. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. These aren't gay people. Still, that's- like, I mean, they're gay for woodwork. That's homophobic and I don't stand for it. Yeah. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Driving by an Amish dude in a buggy and be like, you fucking homo. <laughs> He's got to be like, what the fuck? Oh, dude, a couple black yeah. dudes called me the N-word a couple months ago, dude, and it was like- That, that kind of brightens your day a little. I felt, you know, I was like, you promise? Yeah, you know, I didn't on, know what man. to say. That's so cool. Thank you, guys. I like, say it again, man. Yeah, it's you know? cool when you guys do Yeah. We like it. I remember when I was young, somebody was throwing rock. Me and my buddy were fishing. It was a black friend of mine who's, I think, in jail for murder now, man, my friend Devin, but <laughs> he- um. <laughs> He uh, were fishing in some white, some racist white dude or some somebody racist who looked white from where we were was up on these train tracks and starts throwing rocks at us. Really? And yelling the N-word, right? And so I jump out and I'm like, not me, dude. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Like, yeah. at least I could. <laughs> yeah, don't get me. Yeah, You're getting the wrong crazy. guy. You're going to hit me with a rock. <laughs> but that shit was wild. Dude, the man. Amish every once in a while get smoked by like trucks. Uh-uh. Dude, they're driving horse, horse and buggies. Truck truck driver will go wide right and just splatter them. Rob Barone. Horses and shit. It's bad. Really? And they yeah, hit them. Yeah. And I guess, uh, oh, would you rather get hit from the back with a truck or from the front? Like, definitely from behind. <laughs> Boss. <laughs> <laughs> definitely. From, I don't want to see that thing coming, dude. You don't I don't want to have so. one. I don't want to have one second to be like, oh, here it comes. I just want to just fade to black, just... That'd be nice. Ugh. What sound would you make? I sound all I think about that. What I mean, sound? Wait, am <gasps> I in a car or I'm just getting No, hit? you're just walking. You're out there right. walking. Something's not going good. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah, yeah. Something's, something's gone happened. wrong. <laughs> yeah, something is wrong. You're uh, walking out there. And I'm walking and I, yeah, I definitely want it to be from behind. Yeah. I don't want it, dude. Because if you see it coming your last, you know, you're going to be trying to get out of the way for the last second that's gonna be your last thing you do and the saddest part if one of your friends saw you because you'd probably put your hands up and like <laughs> yeah he put his hands up to try to stop it <laughs> like you see that idiot he, a fire truck hit him he put his hands up to yeah you to would stop. do you go of course you would <laughs> yeah that would be tough man it'd be tough yeah. to figure that out so was there a lot was there amish people like in your like was it a was there like, would y'all go to any Amish markets? I'm just trying to wonder. Yeah, there's, some there's of the Amish th markets and shit oh, in wow. Lancaster. Oh, wow. I didn't really go to those. But they have, uh, we had like Mennonite kids in our school. Wow. Yeah. Chick that would wear like a bonnet. Yeah. They were like, because there's, there's, there's levels to Amish. And there's Mennonites that I, I don't think follow like the no electricity and shit. But they'll like drive. The only color their car can be is black. They can drive it like twice a week or some crazy shit. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, dang. They're not all like strict, no electricity, no this. Yeah. Oh, dang. So they got some like Batman Mennonite kind of folks? Yeah, there's a lot of those guys. Damn. <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize yeah, that. Dude. They're flying, dude. They're out there. Yeah, we tried. I know we tried for a while to get a real Amish or a, uh, somebody semi-Amish on here, and we couldn't do it. You know? I, was at a, I was at a football game in Indiana. There's a lot of them in Indiana and Ohio, too. Mm. And they, uh, these dudes were just on Rumspringer fucking tailgating with us. Wow. And they were getting wrecked, dude. Damn. And they were jacked from all the fucking work. Oh, yeah. Just getting hammered. Just idiots. <laughs> they were dumped. Oh, they could build a birdhouse with their <laughs> tongue, dude. everything. <laughs> the Amish still build a damn. <laughs> they were like, and they speak with a crazy accent. Really? I can't even do it. I don't know. They call what? us the English. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't it's know that. Weird. So they don't look at, so do they look at themselves as even like, I mean, I guess they look at themselves as human, yeah. For sure. And they look at themselves as religious, but they don't look at themselves as like <laughs> English or, or anything. No, they think we're the English. Wow. And they're the, I don't know what the fuck they are, Germans? Damn. Yeah, they're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> they're just wrong across the board, dude. <laughs> and were some of the women, did y'all see some of them? Um, Am nice, I babe. It's rare. But if you, if you see a hot Amish chick, yeah. it's like, damn. That's, I could they, almost, that's, that's my queen. Yeah. She's in a beautiful flowery dress. Yeah. No one's touched her. Oh. What a sweet angel. Stinks <sighs> like hell. You think they smell good or bad? No, they smell bad. Oh. Yeah. They do smell bad. I hope that, well, yeah, they're not going to care. Oh. Yeah. They don't smell great. Yeah, there's something kind of, rom I feel like there's some <laughs> sense of romance about it. Um, yeah, for sure. Because you, I think you always romanticize like a woman with a pail of water and- you know, and you you can help her. Hey, I'll be. You know, yeah. Let me help you. I'll build us a boat or something. Yeah. You know, like I feel like 
And you can almost, you could use anything to get some excitement. You could be like, hey, let's, you know, have you ever done this? And you just do like the Dougie form or something, Damn. you know? You just do like some like, have you ever done the Soldier Boy? You just do something like that. Just Yeah, you do something crazy that, that they've they, never seen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They've yeah. never even seen yeah, it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're incredible. This is going to be yeah. a hit. This is a hit. Yeah, this is a hit. It could <laughs> be a anything. This is a fucking hit. Yeah. Like, the even Soldier if you, Boy hit that. Even if you just do this. Dude, smash hit. And they're like, oh my <laughs> I've God. I've never even thought of doing that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I just think some of the ways you could hit on Amish women yeah. would be insane, dude. For sure. Or if you did this thing, you know, like, oh. You know? They might burn you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They that's might burn true. you. You might get lit up You do a soldier boy, they might burn you. They might be like, dude, that's witchcraft. Yeah, that's We're true. We're not having that here. Imagine how peaceful. You think it's peaceful being Amish on the inside of them, or you think it's. I don't know. That's the thing. Like you were saying, it might be great. Yeah. Just fucking working, doing real work, like farm work, building shit, and then you go to sleep. Oh, yeah. I don't know. And you don't, no one around you is fucking doing good. Yeah. So that helps. You oh, but you're not the, on Instagram. No, you're not. So you're not. You, but I wonder if there's an intense fear missing out because you're seeing, you see one car go by and some, you know, there's yeah. a little, you know, there's mm. someone, a woman with a bathing suit. You got to lose your mind. Yeah. If you're just sitting behind a horse going fucking four miles an hour down that fucking highway convertible flies by and something you just smell just like blast you hear one second of yeah. cool music yes like, what the fuck was that yeah yeah what the fuck dude and yeah and dad's like get your eyes back in your head <laughs> yeah, <dude>. samuel <laughs> you're like jesus yeah, Christ, like, why? why are we doing this yeah. this sucks it must feel like you're on the most insane halloween ever i feel like it's i mean yeah if you ever get it and they do rumspring it and that's as long as you want it's not like uh -uh. one year. Some of them stay out uh -uh. for like 10 years, have a regular life, and then they're like, back to Amish. Guys, I got to let y'all know I'm going to be- I'm going back. Yeah. I'm which is probably fucking sick. Damn. You just burn out in real life. You just go so hard. You go like, as hard as you can, get addicted to shit. Yeah. And then you're like, dude, I'm going back, back to the farm. I bet when you roll back in there, though, I bet people are coming up and smelling your breath, like yeah. wanting to touch you. Oh. Like, what was it? What was it like? Yeah. Dude, I, I've been doing cocaine. Edward was at Rumspring. I look <laughs> yeah. at him. I've been doing cocaine. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> you know how much we can get done around here? <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's fascinating, man. See, I wish we didn't have nothing like that growing up, dude. We grew up actually, uh, they had like an adult store near us sometimes, and sometimes they would throw like boxes of stuff that was like defunct in the woods. And so we'd be back there. People would come back with all kind of sex toys oh, yeah. and shit with pine needles and stuff on them. <laughs> but we didn't. That was, we didn't have anything like. And we had black people, white people, but we didn't get any almost mythological creatures. Yeah. When you go, on, you know what I'm saying? It's a real. Yeah. Pull up a Amish, brother. <laughs> Can you pull up a uh, land Dutch? I think they call them as well. <laughs> they are. Yeah, it is just a different they're just doing a different time period for right. no reason which is it's just unbelievable just like, um, it's 1820 it's like right. why yeah oh it's beautiful now see the Lancaster horse is beautiful though that that like area where they're at oh yeah it's awesome well and also i wonder what happens if they see the horses having sex does that set you know do, is that an awkward time for everybody i wonder i bet they don't give i don't think they i think they're like great more horses Oh like, yeah, I think they're yeah. They're not think thinking of it like us, like porn. They're not like, dude, he's fucking the yeah. shit out of that yeah. horse. Oh, yeah, <laughs> That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> I wish I could do that. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's not like Mardi Gras in New Orleans. <laughs> yeah. You see, there's a video of Mardi Gras in New Orleans. Like, there's a cop on a horseback and another cop on, and the one no. one horse and starts. The, horse, the, and cops the cops are top? still <laughs> on them. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Which I think is the gayest thing you. Can, it's almost bestiality <laughs> it too. Is. If you're riding shotgun on a horse, fuck. <laughs> Who are you? <laughs> you notice God still know you? That's the part that really gets me. Um, what was that time period? We actually had a question that came in about a time period. Was this it? That's beautiful. Yeah, let's go with it. Shane, Theo, what's up? It's Jesse Boone coming to you from Atmore, Alabama. Love both y'all. Love both y'all's content. Love, uh, love both y'all's specials, both the podcasts. Keep it up, fellas. I love it. Shane, I'm a history nerd get the sense that you're a bit of a history nerd I've got a question for you two questions really one what's your favorite period of history to read about or listen to a podcast about and two when 
and why haven't you started a ripoff of the old history of hyenas a la Chrissy Chaos and Yanni, Yanni Poppy. Love you guys. Gang, gang. Gang, baby. Thank you, brother, for the question, Mr. Boone there. Yeah. I mean, World War II is the easy one. That's is it? A, that's the cool one. Everybody likes that one. And is that the one? Who were they killing in that? Was that Jews or not? <laughs> it was? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't. I got it. They killed my, everybody, though. Oh, they did. But they got they got it pretty bad. Yeah. You know what I mean? They got jade out. Yeah. Yeah, they, that was a rough one for them. They they don't like that stuff. World they War II. Like it, yeah. Oh, trust me. Every book at the airport's about it. Yeah. I get it. <laughs> um, yeah. And yeah, I, 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 I feel that. Um, I like the Civil War, though. Ooh. The American Civil War, I love it. Yeah, bro. You ever go to the Nashville battlefield here? Dude, we used to do, when I was growing up, we used to do CWRs all the time, man. Really? Yeah. Oh, we'd be at them, man. We got to be the, uh, we got to do the drum a few times. What else? I got to be like a soldier's son. I used to go to CWRs constantly. Do you really? Yeah. I oh, because of Lancaster I was in Gettysburg. Stuff. I grew up right next oh, to Gettysburg. Oh, man. Dude, the reenactments were fucking crazy. Fucking, we should have fucking won, boy. I love, love well, no, you guys. You guys stunk, dude. <laughs> we didn't we stink, fucked you guys man. up when we took the gloves off. The North just rained down on them, dude. But well, you know where we fucked up is we kept a lot of the brothers out of the fight. Yeah, <laughs> obviously, obviously. If we'd have had a plan to get, I think it, you know, get a little bit more, gets a bit more urban. Yeah, we kept it way too. I think honkied out. Yes, yeah. Towards the end, the the Union was like, get the brothers in. Also, yeah, shit started. Got bad. But you guys had a lot of, uh, I don't know why you guys won. I guess we uh, we probably had some disorganization, I bet. And I think- No, we all- you guys, the, the South was much better. The generals were better. Yeah. It was, it was organized, but like Lee and fucking Stonewall Jackson and Longstreet, those guys were beasts. Yeah. That's why they were even in the fight was because of how good they were. Oh, wow. Because the Union outnumbered them, more in, more industry, more guns. But they just didn't stuff. have that streets. They didn't they have had, that, uh, they had that ditch smarts. They had pussies at general. Yeah. Allegedly. I don't want to besmirch these guys. But I could say probably maybe they had some real nerds up there. <laughs> yeah, I could did. see that. They had nerds. They, had, they were all, well, they were all West Point guys, but they were all like, uh, like there's a guy named McClellan mm-hmm. who just wouldn't. Oh, yeah, George. Yeah, he just wouldn't attack. Yeah. They're like, you got to go. Lincoln was like, go, dude. People in the woods are yelling, boo. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, that's crazy, man. Sherman and Grant, dude. Sherman came down and gave you guys what for? He got fucking lucky. Pull up a picture of Sherman, huh, Mr. Sherman, the Civil War? He was the man. Eh, Let's get a look at him. I have his picture hanging in my house. Do you really? got Sherman and Grant and Custer. Oh, George Custer? Yeah. And he was the one dating Indians as well, I think. That's the one with his arms crossed, crazy hair. A lot of DIY, man. A lot of dating Indians yourself. You know, they had a lot of those dudes was out there. A lot of them, you know, yeah. dipping in the cornmeal, if you know I what think I'm you saying, are. brother. Bro, what would you be doing? I mean, just I. Just get done committing a human. You just get done committing an atrocity. You're not going to want to have some sex? Yeah. yeah. At this point, you've done. You're, you're done. Right, you're done. You've sold your soul. You are evil. That's a good Let's point. Let's go. Once you go evil, you <laughs> yeah, then you're fuck it. Then you're in evil. Yeah, it's like normally I wouldn't just grab this lady. Yeah, but but I did just kill a family. Yeah, you're right. Damn, it's time to go. That's crazy. Once you go full <laughs> yeah. evil, you're full evil. I didn't really, I never really thought about that. You know, we had a guy that lived across the street from us named Brad, and I think he killed his mother, who was our <laughs> favorite lunch lady, Annie. Yeah. Dude, and we loved her, dude. Yeah. And she like her hand, one of her hands shook, or both of them shook. And she would like get the food, and it was just <laughs> dude, your whole town got murdered. Oh, bro, it was yeah, such a risky waiting yeah. for the food to get to your plate. It was like one of those guys that used to drive the dynamite trucks back yeah. in the day, you know, on the on the rocky roads. It was just unbelievable. Really, and then the grandson kid, like he got, yeah, he, was, he got sick of it. Well, he, uh, I think they thought that if they killed her, she was going to get. They were going to get the apartment. And they didn't no, get it. No, the landlord kept it. Uh, somebody else yeah, kept it. The landlord was like, that's not how this works, dude. <laughs> yeah, dude. Just bad fucking. This <laughs> is in fucking medieval times. Yeah, it was just a lot just of. Kill him and be the heir to this apartment. Yeah, just bad organization, yeah. man. But yeah, dude, I can't believe that. The Civil War would have been insane. Dude, I have had these dreams where I go like undercover boss into like, I don't want to say slavery, but like I'm like an <laughs> undercover boss, like in a. 
like amongst like a slaves, you know, slave group or something. I don't know what they like. I don't know what the, <laughs> the correct term is, you know. But um, I always have these dreams where I go undercover. All oh, that show, undercover boss or something. I think, yeah, you know. Oh, okay. Yes, I get it. Sorry, it took me a while. I was just worried about where this was going. Yeah. So you're saying you would want to be a plantation owner that's like undercover bosses. No, I'm not saying anything like that. Okay, what I'm saying is, is that what you said? <laughs> it'd be undercover boss. <laughs> no, I'm saying I have had dreams where I go undercover boss in like a, and I'm like a foreman at like a, uh, like a, like a, I don't know what you call it, like a, like a during slave times. Yes. Yes. And what are you saying? So that would be a plantation. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So you would want to be the boss of the plantation. No, I don't want to be. But then how could you be the undercover boss? Because I'm having dreams where you do undercover bossing, where they like send the boss to work at the plantation. I get it. Right. Okay. Do you want to be the undercover boss or are you just dreaming it up for I'm someone just else? It. No, no, it's not a dream. <laughs> it's not like in my, uh, you know, like 20- You wrote it down? Hope. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you woke up like that. That was a great idea, dude. I'm going to get this done. <laughs> It's not on a vision board. Yeah. It is just, I have <laughs> apparitions in my head while I'm resting. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about, so, nighttime dreams. Yes. So yeah. you want the owner of slaves to, and how would he be undercover? What would he have to do? No, you're on, suddenly undercover. I just keep, in the dream, I'm undercover and I'm like, oh, what do you guys want to do today? You know, but I'm seeing if anybody wants to sneak out or escape. So it's Ooh, like, you're I'm doing like, it like for bad reasons. Yeah. I'm like secret shopper. <laughs> You know what I'm talking about? Or, you know what I'm talking about? Secret shopper where people come in and they order the food, but they're not really there to eat. They're they're sneaking around for somebody. Sure. Yeah. But anyway, I thought dude. you were going down there to check on morale and be like, "How's everybody doing?" Oh yeah, you know like, I am- you were going down to be like, "Any of you motherfuckers trying to leave?" <laughs> look, let's <laughs> tell me. Look, I don't this think is we need bad, dude. Yeah. Let's just order that Nazi pizza yeah, that we yeah, ordered yeah. last time you were here. <laughs> this isn't good, man. If you run an e-commerce business or you do e-commercing, then uh, you probably feel like it's about time people stop treating the e-commerce giants better just because they're bigger. And you're absolutely right. You are. That's why ShipStation gives e-commerce sellers of all sizes access to the same deeply discounted rates, usually reserved for Fortune 500 companies. Yep. ShipStation, you'll be competing with the big boys. You get deeply discounted rates. It works with over 45 carriers. You can easily compare rates and delivery times to quickly find the best option every time through ShipStation. Works with over 300 platforms like Amazon, eBay, and Etsy. Yep, to automate processes like fulfillment and tracking. In fact, 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it as long as they're in business. Sign up now using promo code T-H-E-O. That's that code you need it. For a free 60-day trial at ShipStation.com and start saving with every shipment. That's two whole months of discounted shipping absolutely free. Just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in T-H-E-O. ShipStation. Make ship happen. For most of us, uh, a lot of people can't talk, can't even speak well. You see somebody and you ask them something and they don't know. And they do know, but they can't even, they just kind of do, um, what's it called? Um, when you play that, they do uh, charades. You know, they'll tell you, what do you want for lunch? And they're sitting there acting out a, you know, a sandwich or a, a tomato-based soup. Well, learning a second language isn't always easy. Now, thanks to Babbel, the language learning app that sold more than 10 million subscriptions, there's an actively fun and easy way to learn a new language. Whether you'll be traveling abroad, connecting in a deeper way with family, or you just have some free time, Babbel teaches bite-sized language lessons you'll actually use in the real world. Now, that is good. Babbel's 15-minute lessons make it the perfect way to learn a language on the go. Yep, that's it. There are so many ways to learn with Babbel. Uh, plus, it comes with a 20-day money-back guarantee. Start your new language journey, learning journey today. That's true. Uh, right now, you can save up to 60% off your subscription when you go to B-A-B-B-E-L 
dot com slash Theo. That's B A B B E L dot com slash Theo. Babble dot com slash Theo for up to 60% off your subscription. Babel, language for life. Here's a young man, and this guy seems like he has a lot of problems. <laughs> Let's get a question from him. Hey, what's up, Shane? It's Austin calling from Denver. Just want to know who's the bigger patriot, you or Theo? Let me know. Gang, babe, well, I think with historical accuracy, it's obviously you. I mean, you know more even about civil war reenactments and stuff like that. Yeah, you know? Um, I think you're, you're, I don't know. I'm kind of, I don't know. I, I don't know enough about your patriotism. I believe that I like tradition. <laughs> you know, that's where oh, I'm, yeah. I'm at, you know. So I really like tradition. I like, I think tradition is important to keep a country a country. Yeah. So I think a lot of our tradition gets killed off these days by by people that are fucking lames. Yes. I so I think yeah, that I mean That sounded I, honestly that sounded more patriotic than anything I would ever say, so. Really? Yeah. Like I would even do I remember sometimes <laughs> really? I would do the uh pledge of allegiance like this. Oh shit. That's crazy. I had a kid, I remember in high school my buddy would sit down during the national anthem, a uh -huh. guy I knew. White chubby white kid. Every day, I'd be like, get up. Yeah. <laughs> get up. I was so mad that he was doing it. I was so mad. I was a kid, though. I was like, you better stand up. I just saw Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> it's my, I love the sniper in that movie. Get up. <laughs> yeah, I think it was, so I, I mean, I like, I don't know. I guess I'm just, also, I grew up with a lot of tradition. So, you you, you know, you kind of get used to that stuff and you yeah. think it's important. Yeah. You know, um, and it keeps people associated with one another. It's like, you can relate to other uh generations because you have similar things that you've all done you know yeah but i don't know i mean to me that kind of stuff's really pretty important but i don't know who could be a real patriot but I, my favorite movie is the patriot next to um a league of their own so, really yeah i love that movie. i've man. seen two people i was this is crazy i had two flights i had a connecting flight on the first flight, I fell asleep. The guy in front of me was watching A League of Their Own. Mm -hmm. On the second flight, I, I like came up from another nap, and a dude was watching League of Their Own. Mm -hmm. And I was like, is this the same flight? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, did I dream? <laughs> this is crazy. Who's watching that? Yeah, it's you. a great film. Yeah, me, pe me or, or people that like it also maybe listen to this show. But I remember my sisters rented that. Yeah. And when I was a little kid. And it came in the white case, like, remember? Fuck this movie. I don't want to watch this movie. It's fucking girls. It's stupid. Yeah. And then I watched it and I was like, fucking nice, dude. Yeah. League of their own rules. It's so <laughs> it's good. So good. It? Dude, we went to the uh, Rockford, Illinois recently and did a show there and got to go to the town and go to the museum. Oh, shit. And see like all the old equipment and attire and stuff. Really? It's pretty cool. I believe there's one woman left. Can you see? Is there anybody still alive from um, Rockford Peaches Championship? Rockford Peaches? championship yeah i just want to see if anybody's still living from it because they had one lady and they kept yeah. wheeling her out at events and it was getting dicey it was like <laughs> yeah, it got rough then. oh dude what some of the last pictures she just had like a bake sale <laughs> and bro i don't even know if she's alive dude and there's just there somebody's playing like a radio it's like we are members <laughs> of the all and she just bro there's nothing uh, left in the tank what you got there bubby margaret wig wiggles her a peach Oh, January 2019, the last living local Rockford Peaches. Oh, our Helen Waddle, who's had some health scares, <laughs> but at her 90th birthday, and Angie Ar Argamato. Wow. <laughs> Angie Argamato. Dang. That's crazy, boy. Well, your name's one letter short of anger. It's yeah. A-N-G-E, they spell it. Um, How did you know you were funny when you were young? Did you know you were funny? What was going on with you? Uh, Yeah, I, 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 I knew I was funny. I was kind of a dickhead growing up, like yeah. in school and shit. Yeah, I always had fun making fun of people. Oh yeah, talking shit. When you're young, that's the I best loved way. It. I loved it. Yeah, yelling. Yeah, class, school. What's what's better than being funny in school? Farting in class. I never farting did it. Is, you did it. Oh, I used to. Yes. Wow. And dude, my one buddy used to fart. Yeah, he used to really do it, and he would come up to you and be like, "It was a funny joke." He he would he would walk up to you and go, yeah. "Who do you want me to pass this gas to?" Oh. And you go, you'd pick someone and you would walk up to their desk, fart on the desk. Ooh. How fun is that? Dude, he used to shit differently. Uh huh. In high school, he would shit different. He would come up a different way to take a shit. And me and all my friends would come in and watch him 
Like sometimes he would hold himself up from the top of the stalls mm -hmm. and drop it in. Oh, yeah. He would plank at the top with his ass down. Ooh. <laughs> We got in trouble. A teacher came in. It was like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> he was holding himself up. His face was dark red because it was so hard to do, dude. Oh, it was yeah. hard to do. Oh, it was sure. so hard. He would drop like one drop out. We'd be like, oh. yo, let's go. <laughs> People were screaming. A math teacher came in. It was like, what the fuck are you guys doing? Get out of here. We all had to run. You're like, yeah. divide this bitch. Yeah, and dude. he's just shitting. <laughs> yeah, dude. There is yeah. something amazing. Shit is like such magic because it's like you can just make shit come out of your body. It's almost mm -hmm. like doing magic, you know? I, I bet the first time nobody had ever seen it, somebody was like, yeah. had just opened their eyes and had never eaten. And then one guy who had already eaten rolled up. <laughs> and he's like, hey, watch this. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's insane. <laughs> Yeah. I bet that was really pretty, pretty powerful. Yeah, kid, yeah, when you're young, you're like fascinated with it. I yeah. remember like you watch animals shit, you're looking around, you're like, damn, shitting's crazy. Everyone's shitting. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I would watch myself shit. I would I remember sticking my head it, like as a kid trying to watch. And really coming, seeing, yeah. Yes. Yeah, well, poop's it. coming out of your body. I mean, the, the, the fact that something's leaving your body that you didn't, because I remember first when I was young, I got so scared because I didn't remember eating poop. I didn't know how it worked. <laughs> And I was like, oh my God, dude, I didn't, I didn't, maybe I've been eating this in my sleep. Yeah. I was like, have I been eating this in my sleep? You and ever shit outdoors? Yeah. It's a tough one. I've never done it. You never shit it outdoors? I've never shit outdoors. My are buddies you, have, and I hate it. Oh, you hate it? Anytime I've been around it, it's the, it's just the worst. It's the worst. Well, it I, smells so fucking bad out of water. Out of water? Yeah. Oh, I see what you're saying. Not in the toilet. A dump is catastrophic. Yeah, I think it kind of depends on where you do it and how you do it. Because I got a feeling you've shit outside a lot. Oh, well, dude, when I was young, they had this kid in our town named Mario. And uh, <laughs> and he died, actually. He drove his boat <laughs> into an embankment, which is insane. And RIP, man, I feel so sorry for him. His mother was a librarian and beautiful guy. He was Italian, I think, or semi-Italian. Yeah. And he would uh, defecate in his yard. And I was younger than him. And for us to be friends... I've told this story. He'd make me bury the poops in his oh. yard. And so I was always over there, you know, <laughs> shoveling around. And his yard had a lot of silt. I think it was like alluvial soil. Okay. <clears throat> so I was always over there, sho you know, moving, yeah. you know. And sometimes you get too many in one area, and he'd make you <laughs> move them to another area. You gotta move the bodies. Oh, like I'm John Wayne Gacy <laughs> yeah, or dude. something. Like, Oh, that was a nightmare. And then uh That's a good friend. Like how did he how did he talk you into that or do Oh he like he's one of those kids story. that didn't even blink. He was just had just like, like sheer electricity going on. I need you to him. come over to my house. Yeah. Well, if he's like, if you want to hang out here, you're gonna do this. Mm -hmm. And I was a kid, you know, so I remember getting a lot of looks at you know, at that kind of work. And uh Yeah, you could judge for that. Yeah, but myself, I did Mount Kilimanjaro one time with a buddy, and I remember um for an extra hundred and fifty bucks, they'll the Sherpas that go with you will build you a little duty tent because otherwise oh. you got to just defecate yeah. in the wild, you know? Yeah. And there's other things shitting out there. You know, you, there's a lot of animals out there. You're in Africa. Yeah. So there's, you know, it's weird when you're out there shitting, you can feel other things shitting in the distance. It makes you, <laughs> it's got a real Royal yeah. Rumble type of vibe. You know, Everyone's suddenly out there. you're not the only one in the ring, you know? <laughs> and, <clears throat> and so I remember being up there for an extra 150 bucks, they'll build you that little, you know, They'll get you, you that little, that. Uh, yeah, that just little duty domicile. You yeah. know, they'll really uh, construction you up a little, sh a little shit hostel. <laughs> and so, yeah, we did it, and thankfully we were able to go in there. You know, but uh, but there was a couple times where we couldn't, and um, and we would do it out outdoors, out on the on the mountain. Yeah, kind of nice. Um, but yeah, I guess that school lunch table was the most fun. There yeah. was nothing more fun. Did you have to go to church? Then that time, sometimes. Yeah, I went to Catholic school, so we always had to go to church. Those, oh, yeah. a fart in church is, I'd have to leave. Wow. If I heard someone fart, I'd be like, I'm so sorry, everybody. I'll never <laughs> stop laughing. Because <laughs> then in the rest of the time, it's quiet. So the only thing you can hear is that burnt off the <laughs> pew from from across the room. Just a burnt. From downtown. <laughs> yeah. You hear it. I'm just like, oh, no. Wow. I have to leave. <laughs> yeah. I have to leave. Uh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, something like that was so magnificent. Well, I had this one fellow in our class. He would always walk. We had this chalkboard that was close to the wall. 
and he would always walk back behind there and people would forget that he was back there. He'd stay back there for a few minutes and then no. he would just fart so <laughs> loud. Like the class would carry on, it'd be eight minutes later, the teacher would be giving and he would, you'd forget you'd it, one. it was such a, it was trapped in this little sound space. And it was just hey, surprising a room with a fart. Yeah. They didn't know you were there. It's fucking hilarious. That's genuinely bad ah. because you'd startle a teacher. An adult would be like, is somebody back there? Yeah. Farting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, is somebody yeah, behind yeah. Who's back there? Oh, that's the best. <laughs> yeah. And somebody else, who's back there? Who's back there? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody's <laughs> farting. <laughs> you got to walk out. <laughs> the fucking dumb grin on your face. <laughs> and you're like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what that was. <laughs> <laughs> high school if you're young enough and you don't give a fuck about high if you or if, yeah. you're, if you're in high school and you don't give a fuck about it really and you're kind of smart enough to get you're high, unstoppable you are unstoppable you can do anything because yeah. the teachers know it's bullshit yeah, it's fucking do. bullshit dude yeah yeah because they barely finished it and yeah. all they're doing now is teaching it yeah yeah they're like so, i wish i always wish i could go back Oh. And just be like, dude, yeah, I promise it doesn't matter. Yeah. Go wild. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go fucking nuts here. <laughs> Cause I was still afraid because my you know, I'd get like hit, you know, by my dad if I like fucked up. Oh wow, really? Yeah, not like not if for me it was hard, but no, right. he, he wasn't like beating me. But it was like that was always like if I got like a detention or something like that, yeah. It's like fuck, my parents are gonna fuck me up for this. Damn. You know? Yeah. So like I didn't care about the teachers or school. Yeah. But I was like, there is a looming physical punishment for this fart damn <laughs> like the, so yeah. you had a little there was some skin in the game you had oh, yeah. really won it yeah i got i actually got the belt once because yeah. my friend the same guy i've been talking about this whole time dusty he farted we were doing stations of the cross yeah which they just go around and talk about each thing jesus did on the way to getting crucified mm -hmm. <laughs> and so it's like it's pretty serious and everybody's very quiet oh yeah it's like the first 48 he, yeah and he farted so fucking loud and I, I was, I just exploded. I was, I, I was crying, and my teacher kicked me out. And I tried to defend myself, and I was like, "Dusty farted," and she was like, "That's two. You're suspended." Oh. And I was like, "I'm gonna." I started crying outside. <laughs> I was like, "I'm gonna get my fucking ass beat." I got home. My dad, I, rem I remember it like it was yesterday. My dad was cutting the cutting the lawn in the back, and I just walked out and stood on our back porch and held up the the pink slip. He just let go of the mower and it turned off. And he walked in, and I ran to my room, and he was walking up the steps, slapping the belt, dude. Ooh. Yeah. That's awesome. And I was like, he didn't even hit me, really. He was yeah. just like, it scared the fuck out of me. Damn. It was terrifying. It is kind of crazy. He's a good guy. He's a good guy. I mean, he sounds important. like a good guy. Look, I think you got to beat your kid a yeah. little. You know, yeah. or, or spank him. You didn't he didn't like him. hit me hard with the belt. Yeah. That would be fucking wild. Well, when you also think about what a dad could really do, like right now, you could have a seven-year-old or something, right? Yeah. Fuck him if up. If you really wanted to, you could yeah. annihilate a seven-year-old yeah. with a belt. You'd do like a fatality. Yeah. You could like take his arms off. Yeah. Like Goro. Just. <laughs> like wishbone? <laughs> oh, what'd you get? Oh. Yeah. You could do that to a kid. Damn. That's insane, man. Here's a guy right here. He seemed like a pretty safe guy. And uh, he's got a question for us. But I would say, yeah, let's 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 answer that fellow's question. The toughest time to be, or a time I would really enjoy, Civil War would be so, Civil War would be so, like, it I, would be grueling. I wouldn't want to live in any other time. Right now is the only time. You think? Maybe the last, like, 30 years. But, yeah. What about maybe, like, the 70s, you think? Yeah, 70s could be. I think 70s might have sucked, Dick. Let dude. us be lovers. I don't know. There was real big orgy, uh, uh, orgies and yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm not an orgy guy at all. Oh, you'd be in the fucking place where everybody meet orgies, up. You're the tall dude. guy. Meet I hate it, Shane. Orgies. Meet it, Shane. I don't want to be near any of that stuff. Yeah. I, I think I, if I was back then. You'd be then, there with a camel back on? <laughs> like, hey. Dude, if I was back then, I know I'd be one of the dudes that was like, fucking hippies. <laughs> Vietnam's oh. good. <laughs> like I'd be, I know that's who I'd be. <laughs> the calf slicer, baby. That Peruvian necktie, the banana split, the hard scarf. There are tons of ways to come out on top in the octagon. And for UFC 274, there's one more. With DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC, new customers can bet $5 on any fighter and win $150 in free bets if they do. That's right. Choose your fighter, sit back, and watch the action unfold. It's going to be quite a night. 
Bet $5 and get $150 in free bets if your fighter wins. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. Use promo code THEO. Throw down five bucks on any UFC 274 fighter to win it. And get 150 in free bets if they do. That's code Theo. This Saturday at DraftKings Sportsbook, the official sports betting partner of UFC. Minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for details. Look, the bottom line is people are people are without hair. You see him all the time. Will Smith's husband. He lost it. And there's only two FDA-approved medications that can prevent hair loss. Keeps offers both. That's right. Convenient virtual doctor consultations and medications delivered straight to your door every three months. You don't have to leave your home. That's Keeps. They do it for you. Low-cost treatments start at just 10 bucks per month. And Keeps offers generic versions of the two FDA-approved medications to prevent hair loss. Treatment plans are affordable, typically half the cost of pharmacy prices. Wow. Keeps has everything that your hair needs. Delivered straight to your door with discreet packaging and proven results. If you're ready to take action and prevent hair loss, go to keeps.com slash Theo to receive your first month of treatment for free. That's keeps.com slash T-H-E-O to get your first month free. Keeps.com slash Theo. Hey, Shane and Theo. This is uh, Colton coming at you from Kearney, Nebraska. I was wondering, who do you guys think would win in a cage fight with you two against each other? Maybe to the death? Um, maybe just the first one to get penned? I don't know. It's up to you guys. Uh, anyways, gang, gang. I think you'd probably... uh You're pretty wired. I think we, it'd be a good fight. Yeah. Yeah. It's an interesting thing to do to a guest on a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, I guess. <laughs> have a guy on be like, oh, let's take some questions. <laughs> yeah. Do you think you could beat me up, dude? <laughs> it's like, what? That's true. Sorry. What the fuck? <laughs> yeah, I didn't think about that. Sorry, man. No, it's totally fine. Uh, and I didn't even know we were going to have this question, actually. I think, uh, I don't know. Again, same thing with the patriotism. I've never seen you in action. Yeah. Yeah. But I've got probably 100 pounds on you, so that'd help. Or hurt. That's that a good point. <laughs> yeah, it could be interesting. I think yeah. it'd be a good match. I think so, too. Yeah, that's cool. Um. Yeah, I'm trying to think if there was anything else that was super f- – like, we would go spend time – like, I'm just trying to think of times that were really, really funny when you were young. Like, what was the most – well, once things – once girls come into the picture, some of the fun starts – it's still yeah. there, but it changes. Then it's about being cool. Yeah. There's a certain level of coolness that kind of comes in but then as well. There's a lot of fun being mean to your friend who's trying to be cool. Yeah. That's fun. Like when you see a kid trying to pick up a girl, yeah. it's very fun to be like, yeah. you're gay yeah. <laughs> for trying to do that. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think of things, other things that were great when I was young. I mean, so much of it was fun. Field trips, bro, when you would go on field trips. It was nuts. It was nuts. Yeah. Just on the bus on the way to the zoo. Yeah. With your bros oh. and girls. That was when it was nice. When you started getting horny. Yeah. And then you'd go on a field trip and you'd be like, nice, I'm sitting with the girl. Yeah. Yes, this is so cool. We're gonna kiss. Oh, you're like, damn, Melissa's sitting with Shane. That's like crazy. Crazy. Yeah. How'd that even happen? <laughs> what a come up, dude. Yeah, and you're like, damn, he's really changing, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And then other guys would feel so defeated. You're like, I'm still sitting here with freaking Marcus. Yeah. You know, this dude's ugly. Yeah, but they would have more fun. Actually, no, I would have a but that was so fun. When you started dating for the first time in your life, like, yeah, that shit ruled. Now it sucks. I'd rather hang out with the bros. Yeah, it definitely gets If I was you. on a field trip, I would hate it if I was sitting with my fucking girlfriend. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's true, huh? Yeah. It is interesting. Yeah, you go through these phases where it's like one is kind of better than the other. Yeah. When you're really horned out, bro, when you got your hormones rolling in your body, damn, man, them bitches. Yeah. God. You can't believe it. Yeah, you can't, can't even believe, believe this it. Is, this is so sick. Yeah. Holding hands. Oh. You're going to slow dance. Bro, when your teacher would come over and lean over to tell you something, you would see an edge of a fucking oh, tit. We had these. We had I teacher. would almost throw my dick yeah, off dude, of my body. It was crazy. I couldn't handle the pressure. We had a, a, a lady that was like oh. seventy. She was like seventy years old. Oh. Huge tits. Oh, great tits. But looking back at it, it's like, damn, that's crazy. I was horny for that lady every day mm. for like four years. <laughs> every day, I'd just stare at this lady's old giant tits. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, and teachers would try to dress as unseductive as possible. Which made it even harder, oh. dude. Give me that. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. need to see that. Yeah. <laughs> I want that B-minus tit. I don't mind that. 
I like a good totally covered woman. Yeah, me that too. That makes me even more horny. See, that's why I could really see you. I could almost see you look like an attractive Amish woman if you had the bonnet on <laughs> and the full regalia. I look like fucking Rosie O'Donnell in League of Their Own. Oh, damn. Dude, you know who just messaged me the other day was Roseanne Barr hit me up and sent me a DM. Really? Yeah, I texted her. I don't think she texted me back, actually. I wish she would. I used to want to tour with her. That'd be awesome. Um, so cool. That would be cool. She was so cool, man. Um, yeah, so now you're, are you moving into theaters in some spaces? Do you like that? Uh, What's that like I haven't, for you? I haven't headlined a theater, really, actually at all yet. Yeah. Um, that's. I think that's going to start next year. Wow. And we're working on that right now. Yeah. Actually, this year I'm doing some theaters in England and Ireland. Oh, and wait, Australia. I saw that. You're going yeah. to the Shepherd's Those are Bush? actually, yeah, that'll be my first. Dude, that's That'll be my so first one. Cool. Yeah. Wow, bro. Yeah. That, that audience is going to flip for you, huh? I hope. That'll be cool. Dude, that's so cool. Yeah, I'm excited Fuck. about that. That'll be are you going to Scotland as well? Yeah, Glasgow. Glasgow, that's yeah, where I went. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's probably the same run. Yeah, it probably is, man. The first, the first time you did it was probably, it's got to be the same promoters probably. Do yeah, that. we get well. They let me pick. I think at, at uh, Edinburgh and Glasgow, and I picked Glasgow. So it's just more working class over there, you know. Yeah, just yeah. I'm doing like Manchester, yep, Leeds, Glasgow, London, and Dublin. Damn. Yeah, it'll be cool. Dude. And then Australia, which yeah, I've never been over there. How's that? Oh, the best. Don't really? even, do not come back and give oh. yourself an extra week over there, bro. I I I mean, I was there for two weeks doing shows, but I okay. should have taken like a week and just stayed. Just yeah, maybe I will do that. It's n yeah because you, it's so hard to kind of get back over there. Yeah, I know. I, that's not, like I'm excited about it, but I'm already mad about the flight. Yeah, it's gonna suck. Yeah, well, I think there's just a way to manage it. Do you do you have trouble with um with the flying and traveling and stuff? Are you kind of okay? I don't with mind it? the flying, but I usually fly first now. Yeah, I'm big, dude. If I sit coach, I, I'm literally I feel bad. Right. Because I like I'm. I'm the guy, when you see me walking down the fucking aisle, you're like, please don't sit next to me. Oh. You know what I mean? Yeah. Or at least in my head, that's oh, right. probably right. If I was somebody and I saw me- The I'd big like, long jack. Don't yeah. fucking sit next to me, dude. You're not going to fit. Yeah. So I feel bad. So I'm like, I'm afraid to touch the person next to me. I sit like this mm -hmm. for like four hours. I'll have my shoulder. Yeah, it yes. sucks. Yeah, I do that too. I would used to actually lace my arms under the seatbelt in front of me like this. <laughs> that's probably- put them both yeah, in. Yeah, it's a good way to keep them there. Yeah, does you keep them there? And because I was usually tired, and I would I would be an erratic sleeper like that, and so I didn't want to hit anybody while I was <laughs> while I was kind of laying there. Yeah, I was losing it. Yeah, the first class flights to Australia are like twenty thousand dollars. Is it really? They're crazy. Well, I I, I definitely like, noticed this. That anything that's expensive is now extremely more expensive. Like inflation's yeah, gotten yeah. crazy, and um, I think they're just billing everything out the wazoo. Like even I noticed now, if you get like a suite at a hotel. Like a regular room might be one one eighty, yeah. one sixty. A suite now is like nine hundred. You're like, yeah. what? It's just crazy. I mean, it's just I don't know. It's a lot, man. Yeah, I hope it doesn't continue to suck. It would really blow if we got into like for real hyperinflation and like shit did go bad. What what could happen? That would suck. Do you think you could handle yourself? Do you have any preparation? Like, no. do you have any? I don't even. I don't have a gun. I don't wow. have. Yeah, I live in fucking New York. It's hard um, to get one. Can you have, you can get a gun there probably. Yeah. Probably maybe it's not in Alphabet as as City. I think. Yeah. Maybe not even there anymore. Yeah. New York, if shit started to go bad, I'd get the fuck out of New York. Right. That wouldn't be, that'd be the, probably the last place in America I would want to be. Or get on a ship too. There's a lot of ships leaving out of there. Ships would be good. People don't think about that. <laughs> I asked somebody one time, where would you want to be if the world was falling apart? And they'd be like, I'd, be, I'd get on a ship and go like a couple hundred yards off the coast. I'd be like, yeah. oh. Great idea. And then just come back in when you need snacks. Yeah. Or fish. Yeah, it'd just be like your vending machine. Yeah, what else was I going to do? Nashville would be good for that. This would be a good area. For what? If shit started going pretty bad. But you're centrally low. So yeah. the, there's a lot of people no that boats. can really attack you. Yeah. You know? I think anyway. Um, has it been weird after uh, the COVID ended in New York? Has it been weird? Has it been normal? Do you really, find yourself missing the pandemic at all? Yeah, I miss the pandemic a lot. I left New York. I was just at my parents' house a lot. Shit ruled. I was down. I was down in their basement playing video games. Yeah, I had an old Xbox 360, Ooh. the NCAA 14 on it. I played it for like six months. Oh yeah. His mom would make dinner. It was, it was wonderful. God, that is nice. It was great, and yeah. it was nice not fucking drinking every day. It was nice hanging out, not going to bars, just fucking sitting at home. 
I mean, I could do that now, but <laughs> yeah. Do you? Do you? Uh, I feel like I missed it too. I feel like I missed. There was less people on the roads. Oh, that was the best. If you weren't scared of the pandemic, it was the best. It was the best. Dude, I drove across the country at the beginning yeah. of the pandemic. Wow. It fucking ruled. Did y'all stay at campgrounds? No, I just I went by myself. I drove out to fucking Stanhope's in Arizona. Oh wow! It was, it was the best. No one on the road. Gas was fucking thirty cents. Yeah. What was it like going to Stanhope's? Is it pretty? It's wild. It is. Yeah, I was ready to go back to my parents' basement. Yeah, I, 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 I don't know. It's if fun. They're the best people on earth. Oh They're yeah, They're like the most loving people. But I was tired. It's a lot, huh? I, you know, I was a guest. I felt fucking weird. I was there for like a month. Oh what? Yeah, I overstayed pretty hard. And were there any clues that you should have left? No. Yeah. I was. I was like, I should leave. I'm gonna leave. And they're like, you don't have to. You don't have to. This is fine. There's a guest house. I was just there. Oh, dang. Was yeah. there a pool? No pool. But it would get weird when I wouldn't hang out. Oh. Like if I spent like a day or two just in the guest house, that was weird. So then you feel like, yeah. And then I of... come out and they'd be like, does he fucking hate us? Oh. I'd be like, no, I'm just hung over. I'm not you guys. Yeah. <laughs> I'm trying. It's hard. <laughs> and you're in the desert, dude. Doing partying or drinking anything in the day, it's like twice as hard on yeah, you. Yeah, you wake up. It's just like, oof. I used to be able to hear my eyes Sun. click open because they were so dry when I'd be so yeah, dehydrated dude. out in the desert. And it would click open. <laughs> um, what do you think about that Elon Musk and Twitter, man? I like it. Yeah, What's me the hold too. Up? What's the hold up? I don't know. Is it just because he's going to put Trump on? Uh, oh, is, is that, that what it? You think that's what his plan is? I'm sure he would. I think he's going to be like, we need free speech. I think he's just going to open the gates. It's going to be kind of like that... Yeah. Um, yeah, like Which, uh, maybe he'll destroy Twitter if he does that. Yeah. I don't think he will. I think Twitter will be fucking nuts. You can do anything. I know Twitter. If Twitter really, you could do anything because it's really it's an extremely it's like an alt left app. Yeah, basically. Yeah, it kind it, of is now. It feels like anyway. Maybe it's not. I don't. I mean, they. Yeah, I mean, didn't they have like a the head of the Taliban still on Twitter? Oh yeah, and Trump was not. Yeah, that's a good point. It's like, what are we doing? And how much? I wonder how much like hype they lost when they let trump go because trump was a fuck i mean he's trump as ridiculous it was it, he carried he carried twitter. it his now my favorite thing is his old tweets yeah you ever read those yeah so good Man, it's so good Dude. he's like robert pattinson needs to leave that <laughs> dog of a woman she's gonna cheat on him i know it <laughs> it's, it's just crazy he's talking about the twilight kids <laughs> the best was when uh barstool um dave portnoy interviewed him and was like oh yeah, about the tweets and stuff. Do you ever like kind of proofread it before you put it out? Yeah. It was like, you know, sometimes you kind of just rattle it off and then you go to bed. <laughs> yeah. you know? was yeah. like, He's just, he was tweeting. Yeah. That was him. I was just down there. I was uh, just at Mar a Lago. Oh, I saw that picture. Did you get to meet nuts. him? No, I, I saw him though. He was hanging out. Really? And there was like no one else there. And somebody was talking to me about his tweets. Like they were with him tweeting and he would just sit there and be like, Let's send it, it. <laughs> so fucking just dope. a shit storm immediately so dope like 50 articles immediately so crazy yeah, man. yeah dude do you uh what was mar lago like was it uh real fancy it was extremely fancy but it's small it's small it's not as big as you'd think can you get a it's a motel a hotel room uh no you can't you gotta like get like oh. i had to get like clearance yeah like the day before they had to get like my name and all that shit wow yeah because i got serious. some shows coming up in florida i wonder if i could go there i bet you could wow i bet you could it's crazy. There's like a guy with a machine gun at the front door. What? You're like this is what wild. is it? It, I, it? I think it used to be. It's like a club. You can join it. It's like two hundred thousand dollars a year for membership. And there's Something golf like too. There's no golf course. It's like a spa and a restaurant. Oh wow! And that's that's about it. That's and two crazy. pools. Yeah, and he just lives there basically. Damn. So that's the fun part. You get to see him walk around occasionally. He plays the music. He plays he DJs. What? No, he doesn't. He DJs the music at Mar-a-Lago. Nuh-uh. It's crazy. And what kind of stuff does he choose? And is it in like it Chingy? Was, or when what I was there, it? it was Hotel California. Yeah. Which is crazy. Yeah. And that's also like <laughs> the most whitest <laughs> old so dude song too. And then it switched from like shit like that. And then it went to like proud to be an American. Uh, I swear to God. And then it would go back to that shit. I couldn't, it was like the Beach <sighs> Boys. Dude, I'm surprised, I'm shocked yeah. that more black dudes didn't like Trunk. I think low key every black dude kind of fucking loved Trunk. I think so. I he, think that's a yeah. <laughs> Cuz he made he, cause Kodak he, Black chills there. Yeah, oh, he does. At Mar-a-Lago. Wow. wow. Yeah. Because he was all, I mean, in the end he's kind of about bitches and money. Yeah, that was it. You know? Yeah. 
That's a good president. Yeah, I mean, it's <laughs> like give this guy the keys, dude. Yeah, yeah. See what he does. <laughs> By far the most entertaining president. I yeah. don't even know if being president even matters anymore. It feels like if you're in politics now, it almost feels like it's just ridiculous to even be in it. Yeah, it is kind of embarrassing. Yeah. You look like a dork, dude. Yeah, if yeah, you're like I guess Ron- it's not that important because Biden's clearly dead. Oh, I cannot. <laughs> like, at a certain point, it's kind of not cool that we put a guy out there who's not I well. Agree, dude. It's kind of sad. Yeah. It's like mean. Right. That's what I feel like. like. This is the only way we can win is him. Right. And it's like, this is kind of going to embarrass this. He's going to ruin his whole legacy. Well, every time he goes up there and speaks, <laughs> you can just tell, like, you know, you can see an old guy when he's not doing real health. Yeah. You know? It's fun to see him when he's on, though. Every once in a while, there's glimpses. It's yeah. Like, oh, shit. He's still got it. Yeah. He's, he's firing. I've heard he's a super nice guy, man, from people that, yeah. from friends of mine that know him, but... um. I don't know. I never, I never knew a lot of politicians. Every politician in Louisiana got busted for sex crimes or yeah. embezzlement. That's good. Yeah, <laughs> that's who you want. You want someone that's like, I'm taking fucking wild risks. Yeah, I'm trying to get it done. Yeah, that's true. Huh? I think it's the only real way to be. I think you want like a real. You want that Jesse James in there. Yeah. Do you? I I I, I kind of wish people would start voting in insane, just create the wildest person you could think We're of. Two, the last two have been fucking nuts. That's true. Trump was wild. Yeah. Biden's crazy. Yeah. These are two crazy picks. Yeah. The last eight years, we've had a leader that's like half, you know, half the country's like, dude, what are we doing? We've made some wild choices. We're like the Cleveland Browns. Right yeah, <laughs> just <laughs> shuffling two quarterbacks. <laughs> First round, Donald Trump. It's like, God <laughs> damn it. He's a bust. We're rolling through, <laughs> yeah, dude. Fuck it. Do you think he'll run again? I don't know. I think uh, if he does, Rob De- DeSantis won't run, the guy from Florida. Right. But then I think DeSantis, it seems like DeSantis is going to run. Yeah. And then who the fuck are the Democrats going to do? Like, who are they going to pick? I don't know. They're going to have cool to go with us. if they did Biden again. <laughs> if they were like, dude, four more years. <laughs> He's fine. <laughs> He's just laying down somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're like, he's our guy. Yeah. He's sharp as shit off camera. He gets nervous. <laughs> they do need to try. It's laughable, <clears throat> but they could. You it's never know. fucking laughable, man. I hope they get Hillary. Oh, wow. I hope they get Hillary. I, dude, if we get Trump, Hillary. Oh, again, bro, the rematch? I'll go crazy. Yes. I'll, look, I was like, I, I didn't vote for Trump. I never voted. I didn't vote for Trump. This one, I'd be like, yeah. Trump's got to win this. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'd be so pumped, dude. <laughs> oh, that'd be exciting, dude. Yeah. That'd be a good battle. Oh, I think it would be. It would just be so good to see them, too. Cause yeah, to see them talking shit again. Oh, so good. Yeah. That's the kind of shit, the best part. I wish that the vice pre- the president had to pick a vice president from the other. It had to be like a, from the other part. I always wish yeah. that Trump and Bernie had to be on the same ticket. Because then it's like you have this, they're going to have to figure shit out, you yeah. know? You're going to have yeah. to have some real conversations. That's what Lincoln did with his cabinet. Did he really? Yeah, it was, uh, there's a book called like Team of Rivals. He just got everybody he disagreed with. Oh. Huh. Yeah. See, you're, better, you're right there. You're a better patriot than I am. I think nah. that, eh, that Dude, gives you, it. I mean, I had an autograph hacksaw Jim Duggan poster. That's pretty good. That's Honestly, that's kind of more patriotic. I don't know. I mean, he was a construction worker, but- I don't know if that's more patriotic, <laughs> you know? Yeah. But that's something. You like wrestling now? Um, Not as much. I mean, yeah. I, I don't go watch it. No. You know, have you been recently? No. Well, Soder took me to one like four years ago. Yeah. I'd never been to one. It was actually fucking, it's cool to see. Yeah. In person. You're like, holy shit, this is real. It's a real production. Like, these yeah. These guys are getting fucked up. Oh, I saw a Mexican father and son and combined they were probably eight, four. <laughs> and they were- it was when The Rock came back. There's a night where The Rock came back. It was like 10 years ago. And they were, when he came out, they were both standing there holding hands, bawling, crying. Damn. And it That's was nice. Like, oh, it was beautiful, That's man. That's what I was just saying. I just saw, I just watched WrestleMania. It was I haven't watched wrestling in years. Yeah. And Stone Cold came out and I was instantly just like, oh, holy shit. Yeah. This is so sick. Yeah. Yeah. I can't, I, I'm afraid I can't get into it because that would be, I don't need that. Well, yeah, I don't it's need like, to be a wrestling fan. What can you take on? Yeah. You know? I can't take that personality on. At this point? Yeah, it'd be bad. There's not, there's not a lot of pros. Now, I will say this. You <laughs> remind me. Bring up um, <laughs> bring up the big boss man. I think you look yeah. a little bit like this guy. People bring that up a lot. Big boss man's son. I see that. Yeah, I could bring up that. If you look up big boss man, <laughs> policeman, wrestling. Yeah, I do look like the big boss man. 
But it's funny that we look through things as a lens with racism. Not because at the time it didn't seem racist. It's well, not yeah, like we didn't know. But my black like, friends wouldn't not watch wrestling. Yeah, it'd with be me. like Farouk would be out there, and the big boss man would come out with a fucking <laughs> stick, a police stick. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hit him. I mean, I think there's <laughs> it's certain like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I mean, you don't want to play this in Minneapolis. You don't want to play a lot of big boss man <laughs> yeah. reruns. You know, there's certain places you want to do stuff. What and would not. his finishing move? The big boss man? I don't know what he would do. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's just fun. Yeah, it's just fun. fun as shit. But oh, yeah, the, the old promos like they'd have a fucking like an Arab dude come out and be yeah. like, "Iran's the best. America can suck our fucking dick." So the whole good. crowd would be like, "You motherfucker." See, that's yeah. one thing I love about, I, I love it if a crowd wants to change USA. In other countries, you're allowed to have so much more like, this is our country, you know, but here the media, I feel like you try to say. Yeah, they've, they've told us to chill the fuck out. Right. Our media America, tells I think it. we're the only ones doing that. Totally. Other countries, no, I mean, now t- saying chill the fuck out, but like other countries are like, they're not, we have flags everywhere. In America? Everybody even? in America is like, America's the fucking best. Or at least that's how it used to be. Yeah, that's how it used to be. Yeah, now it's a little more like, actually, yeah. we have a pretty troubled history. Yeah. Like, yeah, go to fucking any other country, dude. Just yeah. Look into anybody's history. Everybody, not saying it, not, you know, not saying it doesn't matter, but yeah. They're all a little dicey. Yeah. Well, being a lot, existence has been a dicey run. Yeah, it's been pretty bad. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I think, you know, I don't know. I mean, I just, you know, I do my best. Did you ever do Opie in, in them show? No, by the time... No, I was I was I I was late. I did Anthony Akumi's show. Yeah. I did Jim and Sam shit like that. Oh no, yeah, Jim never and Sam. Never Opie. Yeah, yeah. That's a bummer. I've seen you on there. It was fun on there. Yeah, it was wild on there. Yeah, dude, I had so much fun in there, just sitting goofing around. I just felt like such a just a it just felt like a real goof. And that's what it, it was also nice back then. It'd be exciting to be on a show. You'd be like, holy shit, I'm got to do Sirius XM today. This yeah. is fucking crazy. Yeah. Now if I now if it's like a oh, fuck, I get it. Got to go to this podcast. The fucking radio. Yeah. Oh, the radio. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The radio really, really. It's not on the really, like really. road. Yeah. When I was just starting, I was like, damn, so sick. Got to do radio. Not a big deal. Now yeah. Like, like we're over at the radio I'm not station. not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah it's like, it's, I'm no not way. doing it. Dude, it must be crazy. A lot of comedy. I, I guess I haven't gone into morning radio in a long time. Thank God. I mean, it's a blessing not to have to go. But yeah. remember how hectic it was if you got into a place, you get on the late flight sometimes. Yeah. Or you get the early flight, you get there, you have to go straight to the radio station. And then you had to try and get a nap in after that, which like is 6 fine. 6 a.m. It's oh. always fucking 6 a.m. radio. And you go in, and they don't care at all. Half of they're like, so what was SNL like? It's like Every now right. and then in Florida, I'll they would that. care. Florida True, likes their radio. Yeah, 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 yeah. Florida still loves their radio. Calta? Yeah, um, yeah. yeah. And they had Rochester, New York had a good radio station. There's still some markets that were pretty sick. Yeah. But it was different, man. I just hated waking up. Yeah, so hard. Yeah. Did you ever, uh, I remember getting so drunk one night, I peed all over my phone. It was like when cell phones <laughs> first came out, and I fucking missed it. And they were furious. Oh, bro. really? People were so pissed. Yeah. yeah, what are they, it's okay. Yeah, it was bad. Oh. It was a day where I was supposed to drive myself over there. Oh, you know? okay. So that was the thing. I got to do one Rogan show, and I didn't know that I was going to go up first, right? So we're just standing there backstage, and he's like, you guys ready to start the show? And we're like, yeah. And I'd just been kind of like getting busier, you know? And so like, I think I was probably somewhere in my head, I'm getting a little bit full of myself or something, you know? And so then he just gets on the mic, and I I just assume that somebody else is there and he's going to go up first. And then he's like, ladies and gentlemen, Theo Vaughn. And I walk out there and I'm like, oh, fuck. <laughs> oh, shit. It's like 3,000 people. Oh. Most people I'd ever been in front of, people are still sitting down. And I'm yeah. like, oh, Jesus. Yeah. And part of the lights, they were still on for some reason. It was oh, just. no. Oh, it was so hard, man. It was so hard. That, that was, was fun, a, though. That was a nightmare, bro. I mean, it was awesome. Yeah. And it was super cool, but it was just hard. Yeah, that sucks. I've had to do that a couple of times. Yeah. Where like you're on the road with someone big and they're like, all right, you go first. When, like, I, I shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> <You're> like, no. <laughs> but you're like, of course. And then you get off stage and like, fuck, I should have killed. Right. But people were literally sitting down and they they hated me. Yeah. Oh, that's yeah, the feeling like, I the had. Fuck off the stage. Oh, man. dude, I wanted yeah. to get out of the. And then I don't even want to get out of the place. You want to get out of the whole city. You yeah, want to get out get of, off the tour. You want to get off of the earth <laughs> when it goes real bad. Yeah. Was it, um, was, was working with Louis pretty cool? Yeah, it was awesome. That was like a dream. Did he approach you about it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it was cool. He saw me perform at the cellar one night. 
and he was like laughing and i was like damn that's crazy and then like two days later i got an email from his lady that was like do you want to come work on the tour wow. i was like yes I was pumped. Was it when you were, was it, did you feel real inferior with his comedy? Because his comedy is so unique and good. It's, uh, sometimes I'll watch and I'm like, oh man. Yeah, for sure. I mean, but he's one of those, like, he's so good that I'm not even comparing. You know right. what I mean? Right. Well, like if it was somebody like our age and they were murdering and I wasn't even close, I'd be like, motherfucker, I actually, I don't like them now. Yeah. <laughs> like something crazy like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that, but with, with him, it was like, yeah, he's, I think he's the best ever, so. Yeah, I didn't. Yeah, it was cool to watch. Yeah, he is. He, I mean, it's just man, he's so good. I just watched. He just ran his. I was with him. He ran his new hour for the first time after his special. I I was with him the night he ran it, and he was like, "It's funny because he was like nervous. He's like writing and like, how do I? He's killed first time he ever ran it. Damn. That was one I was sitting in the back like, fuck, I'm not even close. He hadn't even ever practiced it. He even I mean, practiced he had, the jokes. He had run it. He had definitely done right. like spots, but it was the first time he ran it all together. Yeah. Someone said that he made, and this is a rumor that I heard, $13 million on his special selling it online. Did yeah, probably. I believe that. I wonder if that's true or not. I believe it. It was probably what, like 10 bucks, 20 bucks? Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Because how many people have to buy it then? A million. Oh, yeah, good call. <laughs> yeah. Around there. Yeah. <laughs> Something like that. Because I remember asking my agent about it, and he's like, no fucking way, you know? Yeah. But but the agents want you to think that because they want you to sell your special yeah. to a um to a also he was running ads did you see any of those uh uh-uh. uh Louis was running like he bought ad space on TV wow. he was running infomercials that's amazing for the special good for him they were like funny yeah damn he's so creative man. yeah um do you find it easier as you got more popular do you feel like it's gotten easier do you feel like it's gotten more complicated has anything changed for you you think as far as I think stand up wise it's definitely it's easier, which is kind of a problem. Right. You know what I mean? Right. Like people just like to see you, so yeah. it's not even about they're what like you're excited. doing. Yeah. I'm like, this bit sucked. And they're like, ah, that's not good. Yeah, there's like, something about the element of surprise. Yeah. Yeah. There's something about being surprised. <laughs> um did they have a lot of uh I'm trying to think of something that could have happened when you were young. Oh, do you remember the first man you ever saw that could have been homosexual or anything like that? And mm. you guys were kind of shocked by mm. it. I guess we I didn't know because it was priests. Oh, but I knew wow. something was weird. I just figured it was because he was a priest. Oh, he, yeah. He like spoke with an effeminate voice. Oh, dang. But I remember being a kid and being like, maybe it's just because he's a priest, he's different. Oh, yeah, like you know God I mean? loves him so much that he just has so much love in him yeah. that some of it's coming out towards men. Yeah. Or more of it than usual. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that was it. How about wow. you? The first guy you saw that you were like, damn, definitely. Well, we had a they had a mentally handicapped guy in our town and uh people would be like, That guy's gay, you know, and he wasn't, he was mentally handicapped. But nobody knew because he rode like a woman's bicycle. And so uh people were always yelling gay at him and stuff like that. But he was <laughs> mentally handicapped, yeah. you know? And he would kind of come by the school a lot, but I think it was he was like child minded. Yeah. So he would just try to be by the school and stuff like that and be friends with other boys and he wasn't gay at all. He was just his genetics were gay, I we guess. Had a guy or whatever. Like that. You know, he was straight, but he was just uh, mentally unwell. I had two guys like that. I had one guy mm -hmm. he used to ride a tricycle around. It was Ooh. sick. He had a tricycle with his a customized license plate on the front with his name on it. Was he, he would Henry? try to get you. It was John. Mm -hmm. He would try to get you. He would yeah. come up and be like, "Do you like pancakes?" Ooh, he'd be like, "Yeah, yeah." Be like, you want to put pancakes in my pants? Ooh. <laughs> and he'd be like, "Dude, John, what are you doing?" <laughs> like, I didn't even—I wasn't even afraid as a kid. I'm gonna use that. Like, I was good. just like, "This guy's wild." Yeah. I didn't even think that it was like he was trying to rape. But did, did, I don't know if he was. I don't think he was. I think he was just having fun. Breakfast love, saying wild stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't want to put that pancakes. on his name. I think he was just riding his trike around, talking shit to people. Which is a pretty good life. Oh, dude. I th Yeah, if you're living like that, I think living law, it's definitely one way to go. Getting a tricked out tricycle. Yeah. If you're a mentally handicapped man and someone hooks you up with that. Yeah. And then you just get to ride around and say whatever you want to like kids. Oh, yeah. No one had a problem. Oh, you go dude. up to kids and they'd be like, that's John, dude. He's wild. Yeah, he's wild. <laughs> yeah. Remember that? Before, every was, before everybody was a creep, it was like, that guy's wild. He's wild. Bro. He has a good time. Yeah. He's just riding around a tricycle through a neighborhood. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if we had like a guy, I mean, we had some pedos and stuff as I got a little bit older, alleged guys, you know? Yeah. Um, I always, I always gave it pass to the mentally handicapped pedos. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. I can't be mad at them. Well, I'm sure there's, and I've heard of this, um, that there's a lot of guys who would let mentally handicapped guys jack them off or do, you know, do sexual stuff. That's not great. Yeah. No, but to like. Oh, oh, oh. For them. To get it out. No, for them. Like the guy wanted to. So it's like to help them, you know, I, I hate to say to help them out, but it's like. Yeah. You know, the guy wants to so bad and you are trying to help the mentally unwell, I guess. And now that I say it out loud, it sounds well, fucking yeah, wait. crazy. <laughs> That's actually. totally crazy. So it was oh like, hold on. So it was like, I think this mentally handicapped guy's horny. I'll take care of it, guys. No. <laughs> I'm going to let him masturbate me. Yeah. 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 That's crazy. Fuck, man. Fuck. People are fucked up. <laughs> I didn't even think about that. I always thought like, yeah, man, I, I totally see what you're saying. But now that I really put it on, you know, put pen to paper, it's pretty bad. Here's a question that came in right here. Hey, Theo. Hey, Shane. Gang, gang. Was wondering what you guys thought about taxidermy. I got my Impala right there. And then got my Ram head right here. Ram head, that's the Baphomet from uh, Matt, Shane. You can talk him into getting one. Uh, you guys down for it? Bringing the outdoors indoors, and uh, what kind of taxidermy would you guys like? Good question, man. You know, a lot of uh, you'll see in the urban community they do a lot of human taxidermy. You've seen that recently. A lot of that stuff's been put out there, like a brother. At, you know, have him standing by the door at his own funeral. at his funeral. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's awesome. It's just pretty live, just man. Putting a blunt in his fucking hand. Yeah, everyone. Have, yeah, that's a good way. Black people do pretty dope shit like that. Like black people are hella fearless. I think when it comes to death, white people are a lot more like traditional with it. I think. Yeah. And black people sometimes will get a lot more uh, avant garde. Sure. You know? um, those African funerals? Those yeah. dudes are holding the casket, like, dancing and shit? Yeah, shit's so that's hype. A decent way to go. Fuck. Isn't, wasn't New Orleans pretty cool about it? Oh, yeah. Didn't they have, like, parades and shit? Yeah, they got good second-line parades and stuff like that for weddings and funerals. You know, yeah. people will come out and celebrate. You can hire these guys, and they'll come out and play, and, and everybody kind of gets these towels, and you dance yeah. a little bit. It's got a real – that's actually one of the funnest things, especially if it's at a wedding. You're rolling through the French Quarter, and everybody's just letting that's it awesome. go. And you're just like uh, – yeah, it's a really good time, man. My, Everybody's up uh, in their tuxedos cruising. To answer that guy's question, the my girlfriend, her dad hunts like crazy, mm -hmm. like African animals. Mm -hmm. So he's got like a taxidermy room of like all that shit, like the Impala and all that. And we're gonna, I'm going to get him. I, I bet he's going to give us too. If he passes away? No, he's giving them, he's mailing them. Oh, wow. Do you get to pick them out? You, you already picked them out? Nah, I think they're ones he didn't like, but they're awesome. Mm -hmm. You know, so yeah. I have two of those in my apartment. Wow, that's pretty cool, man. Pretty excited about it. Yeah, it is nice. Yeah, well, I'm trying to think. I almost bought a buffalo not long ago. I was price gouging. The man I thought was price gouging it, <laughs> but it was a buffalo head. That's you awesome. Know? Yeah, we'll see. I think I bet it's still there. I thought about driving by, but um, but that's something that I thought about. Wait, he's got it. It's in a store. It's in a store. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Right. Course, you notice different young, loves as you get older. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. Like the first time you fall in love, it's like crazy. I was in college. I was like. I was such a fucking weirdo. I was like you? emailing. <laughs> I was like emailing her. Should we get in a fight? I'd be at work after. I'd be like, you motherfucker. Oh, yeah. Sending like crazy. Yeah. I, well, yeah. It was Because email was like, it was almost like a text message back then. Yeah. There was no. And I'd have to check my emails. See if she got back. Oh. She didn't. I'd send another email. That'd be the worst. <laughs> yeah. Be the How about worst. you? Are you in love? No, I'm not in love. I, I I've definitely have been in love. Um, <laughs> I would like to be in love again. Yeah, you know, I think it definitely gets different. It, it gets different when you're young. That young love, man. Did you ever buy flowers for a girl or yeah. anything like that? Did you ever do any yeah. crazy stuff like in front of a group of people? You're like, dang, that dude must be in love. I'm trying to think. I went to a basketball game once and like gave a flower to a girl at the game, like when she was in the stands. I, think I did that, and it was like. People were yelling, Queer. Ooh. you know, people were yelling the N word, dude. I think I'd be even. on your ass. Like it was like, if I saw a dude do it. Yeah. Even though <laughs> oh, I, I have done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if I saw someone else giving a flower to a girl, I'd be like, pussy. Yeah. <laughs> It'd be so fun. I think I even yell highlight. pussy. Yeah. Like, yeah it got soft. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, it was so crazy. And I had so much acne at the time. I was afraid to move my face because I thought a lot of the acne oh, would no. pop out of my skin. That's crazy. Oh. How'd it go with the flower? Did she like it? It went fine, man. Yeah. I feel like it doesn't work. Like anytime you go crazy like that and like try to do an over the top romantic mm -hmm. thing with a girl you're not dating, 
Oh yeah. Or like if you're like, I want to date you, I got you this bouquet. Yeah. <laughs> it's like no. She's not into you. Oh, dude, they had, uh, I remember I used to work with this one guy named Thomas, and he sent this girl this, like, the biggest cinnamon cake ever. And I'm like, what is a cinnamon cake, first of all? And, uh, what a risk. Oh, what horrible insane. risk. And she thought he was insane. Yeah. She, he sent it to a bar she worked at. So she gets to her bar shift, and there's a huge, and like, like, somebody cake. sent you this. Do you yeah. know Thomas? Yeah. <laughs> She's like, barely. <laughs> you got me a cake? <laughs> Um, I mean, he has to sit there waiting like yeah i wonder how this is going he's probably <laughs> loving that fucking cake <laughs> he just gets a text like never call me again fuck <laughs> sitting that's back insane. launching a cake and sitting back and being like this is gonna go well <laughs> and then never hearing from the woman again yeah, <laughs> just drop it you forget about it and now you can't yeah. even go to the bar anymore. Oh, never again. That's the craziest never part. Never again. That bar is gone. Yeah. You got to burn it down. Yeah. yeah. You got to go that night and set fire to it. Oh, man. I'm trying to think of anything of, of another time. I wrote a I... poem to a girl once. Oh, definitely. In like seventh grade. Yes. Here's This is the worst part. This is like, this is one of the most embarrassing things I've ever done. Yeah. I, it keeps me up at night mm -hmm. today. Uh I wrote a Bible verse on the back of it and gave oh. it to her. And my friends found it before she got it. Or she got it and gave it to my friends. It was like, look how weird this dude is. I walked into school the next day and my buddy was holding it. And I was like, dude, I'll fight you. <laughs> Teary eyed. I was like, don't, don't show that to anyone. Oh. <laughs> like, and he already had? And, oh, of course. Oh. Of course. Disaster, bro. Damn. A Bible verse. Which one was you remember? Yeah, it was... Uh, Fuck, it's so bad, dude. It was like Song of Songs. It's like a love book. Oh, yeah. It's a book of the Bible that's about like people falling in love. Yeah. Bad, I, dude. Sixth grade, I was like, I love God. Yeah. I loved being Catholic in sixth grade. God is my girlfriend, one year. dude. That, that guy, I remember that guy had a shirt at it our It took school. a lot for me to tell you that. Oh, dude, well, I'll tell you, I used to steal a fucking child's bike from my neighbor's yard, and I would bike over to this girl's house. It was like four miles, right? Yeah. In the middle of the night. Ooh. To go over there and like just kind of suck on her breasts for a while. That's fucking great. Yeah, but then I have to bike all the way back. Bro, it would take. I'll do that today, dude. <laughs> oh, <holy laughs> I'll bike four miles to suck tits. Are you crazy? Yeah. My story, your story was awesome. Oh, yeah. My story was the, the most embarrassing thing I've ever done. <laughs> you rode a bike to suck tits? Yeah. That shit's awesome. How old were you? Uh, oh, you were young? That shit's awesome. Oh, uh, no. Well, uh, I was probably, yes, 15, 15. Bro, that's as good as it gets. Yeah. God, and those tits were good back then. Yeah. Remember how good a tit was Child back then? tits? Oh. <laughs> if you were a child. <laughs> yeah, of course. Bro, ch child on child tits? Mm. What was that, dude? Right when they got tits? <sighs> you, were, you were like, dude, she's got the biggest tits in the class. She's a whore. Yeah. <laughs> like, you'd yeah. be like, dude, that slut with the huge tits? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oh, look you had no dude. idea what being a whore was. You're like, it's just whoever has the biggest tits is a whore. Oh, I remember I called my bus driver a dildo. I heard the term and I didn't know what it was. And I was yeah. like, you're such a dildo. And then I had to go to the principal's office. And the principal beat us. That's back when they used to beat you. He could hit you. You know? Oh, yeah. They probably kept that going in Louisiana for a while, right? I think they stretched it out. Yeah, they went a little late. Dude. Yeah. They got to like the Obama administration. Yeah, it was still like <laughs> Extra innings yeah. on that, but I remember going to the principal's <laughs> office, man, and he would freaking rat. He oh, he'd rattle. He he had that big yeah, piece of wood paddles. On. Yeah, I remember the principals had paddles. Yeah, it's what gave it's what gave them a lot of their power too. Yeah. I felt like now they're fucking. Yeah, what, what are you, you gonna, gonna do? do? What are you gonna do? Yeah, I'm Italian. Yeah, they don't have any real power. They have nothing. It's That's awesome. I mean, I can see how that worked. Yeah, having a fucking stick behind your desk. Threatening to hit a child. Did y'all have different like cliques and stuff at y'all school? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Regular cliques. Although it was a Catholic school, so you couldn't. Uh, we had a uniform. Uh, so it was hard to really express yourself. Yeah. But they, the goths found their way. Yeah. They'd hit you with like some eyeliner or something. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, everybody was wearing the same fucking thing. Oh. I actually liked it. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, I hated really having change. to have I've clothes. I was in this jersey for three days. Yeah. It's good. I saw I did see it before. <laughs> I wore, it was the first time I wore it last time. Oh, good. And I've never, I've wanted to wear a jersey for a long time. And you did. And now I'm doing it. Yeah. 
I'm glad you did. I'm overdoing it though. So. Oh, dude, I'll yeah. tell you this. One night, so I talked about this co- this girl I met at a coffee shop, who I tried to like. It got so embarrassing, and I'd order this omelet or whatever, and then I'd still sit there and eat it, even though like I had like. <laughs> I tried to ask her out, but I think I didn't get the words right. And she said something and I couldn't even hear it. And then I got nervous and just walked away. And so then I'm just sitting there with this omelet and I had, and I, and the way I just, just the pain of just sitting there eating the omelet. And it's just me You're and not her hungry at all. Oh. You're just eat, getting rid of it. The only reason I went there was to talk to her and I couldn't do it all right. Anyway, the next time I go back in there, it was like three months later um, after everybody had eaten the cinnamon cake and uh, she, uh, <laughs> She's like, oh my gosh, people called here and uh, and even called my boss. So, oh, uh, shit. And I was like, wow, that's crazy. That's awesome, though. Yeah. Like, they're like, you never should have divorced the Rat King. That's what they said. <laughs> I'm like, divorced? Yeah, yeah it's crazy. So, that's pretty hype, dude. That's wild. Um, Well, shit, man, I know you got a tour going on. Yeah. You know? I don't want to keep this thing alive any longer than it, <laughs> it feels like it. Bro, hey, I'm so hot. I feel I'm bad, so bro. Hot, Dude, no, congrats on all your success, man. And where can people, if they haven't seen your tour, they want to come see you? Uh, ShaneMGillis.com. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, go check out Shane if you haven't seen him. Um, you know, there's just nothing like him. I think there's nothing like watching somebody who's having so much fun. Thanks. Uh, and that's what I notice when I'm watching you, man. And uh, yeah, thanks for coming and hanging out, man. I appreciate Bro, you're it. You're the man. Gang, thanks. baby. Now I'm just floating on the breeze And I feel I'm falling like these leaves I must be cornerstone Oh, but when I reach that ground I'll share this piece of mind I found I can feel it in my bones But it's gonna take a little time For me to set that parking brake and let myself all wild shine that light on me. I'll sit and tell you my story. Shine on me, and I will find a song. I will sing it just for you. Now I'm Damn it.